Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus, and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 303. I thank God for Bible in a Year because the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is the final authority. And if we want to grow in our relationship with God, it would behoove us to learn the discipline of getting into God's Word. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when we're spending time in the Word, what we're really doing is we're spending time with God. And that's exactly what we need to do in our walk with God if we want to grow if we want to be used of God, if we want to be pleasing to God, if we want to experience the abundant life that Jesus made available to us through His death at the cross. We've got to spend time in the Word. And yes, it is a discipline that we have to be intentional with. If this is your first time joining us for Bible in a Year, I want to first of all welcome you to the channel, Digital Disciple Ministries. Uh, we endeavor to help you grow in your relationship with God by helping you to grow in your knowledge of His Word. And this particular video series right here is a devotional that follows the reading plan, Bible in a Year 2020. And you can find that on the YouVersion Bible app. So what we're doing is we've endeavored to read through the entire Bible for the year 2020. Now, obviously, we're in December, and we are almost through with reading the entire Bible. But feel free to join us right here where we are, because the new year is upon us, and you can always go back to day number one and start your own journey going through the Bible in a year. But you don't have to restrict it to a year. You can double up if you want to, triple up if you want to, whatever you see fit, whatever your hunger is for God, feed your hunger proportionately. Now, all of the videos are up on the YouTube channel up until this day, 303. So they are here for you. But by the time you might get to this video, the whole series will be available to you. Use these videos as a supplement in addition to the reading and uh, let's learn how to meditate on the Word of God, how to think about the Bible and how to rightly divide the Word. Let's get into the Word of God. We are going to start in the book of Psalms chapter 119 and beginning with verse 130. This is a very big uh, chapter right here, the biggest chapter in the entire Bible, and we'll probably spend a few more days in this chapter. But I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, and you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are most comfortable with. And here's what the Bible says. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. When the Word of God enters in, it illuminates. Why do we need to read the Word of God? Why should we spend time studying the Bible? Well, here's a good reason for you. Psalms 119 verse 130. The entrance of thy Word, not our words, not man's word. So you can study the Bible and really just be studying what somebody else said about the Bible and never really go to the source. It's important for us to go to the source. Yes. Can you derive knowledge from reading the writings of other people? Absolutely. If someone is commenting on the Bible, can you gain knowledge from it? Of course. Sure you can. But Go back to the source and know what the source is saying and why they're saying what they're saying. Trace it back to the Bible. If they are teaching, hey, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible means, go back to the Word. We can learn from other people's interpretations or how they view the Bible, but we shouldn't stick to that. 
If you're going to build with what somebody else is saying, then make sure what they're saying derives from the Word of God because the entrance of God's Word gives light. Not my ideas or my doctrine. For example, you can take the Word of God and you can come up with some nonsense. You really can. You can say, well, the Bible says this and then build this case. But do you really have revelation? And when the word enters in, is it bringing light? If it's not the word of God, it's not illuminating. So, are we in darkness then? If we are ingesting all of these things that are not the Bible? There's a verse that comes to mind of what Jesus said about light being in us. Let's see if I can find that. I'm so accustomed to using my computer Let's see if I can work this. Uh, huh. I am searching. How great. Okay, here it is. Matthew 6:23. And this is Jesus speaking. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? If your eye is evil, remember the eye, the, the, the organ of sight, the faculty of vision, and the way that we see is that light enters in through the eye and projects an, projects an image through electrical signals that are sent to the brain. It's really a beautifully unique process that happens. Vision is a miracle and really it demonstrates the genius design of God's creation. When you begin to study the anatomy of man and all of the intricate little parts that have to work together harmoniously in order for us to experience what we call life and all of the animations that are available at our disposal, how can you not believe that this was intelligently put together? How can someone believe that this just came by happenstance? If you are one of those humans, your faith is greater than mine. Hallelujah. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of light. But the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. If you're simple-minded and you just don't have a clue, the word of God will teach you. The word of God will train you. It'll give you principles to live by, statutes, ordinances by which you can regulate your behavior and regulate your thought life. So, Let's allow ourselves to be filled with the light of God's Word. Another great reason why we should spend time in the Word of God. Hollywood, I imagine, when the entrance of Hollywood may not bring light to you. Hollywood is full of darkness. So when we're watching TV or movies, we got to be careful with the things that we're putting in us that we put more light in us. How else will we be able to see? If the light that's in us isn't light at all, how can we be a witness? Because Jesus said that we are lights in this world. We got to be careful what the source is, what's fueling the inside. And a very safe thing to do is to just hide in the Word of God, and let the Word of God hide in us. So, let's just do it. Nike, my brothers and sisters, Nike. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says this, Who, being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. 
This is speaking of Jesus. Jesus is the express image of God's person. A study that I have become interested in doing is finding out how the Bible defines the word person. What does the Bible say about a person? What is a person? Because this is going to be foundational to understand God's idea of a person, whether he is three persons in one God, in one being, one being manifested as three separate persons, or whether he is one person. Oh, the mysteries of the Bible. I feel like a detective, man. I like to get into it and dig into it. A lot of, uh, yes, yes, just like you, some of you like to dig into that macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving Day, praise God, hallelujah, or that pumpkin pie or whatever it is that is your soul's delight on that glorious day. I like to dig into the word of God, hallelujah. I could go for some pumpkin pie and stuffing right now. Maybe Christmas dinner will be like Thanksgiving dinner when we have a huge spread. I think we, this is my personal opinion and it's a sidebar. You can fast forward if it, it fast, blah, blah. fast forward if you want to. Father, help me. Something is happening. And that is that I think that we should have feast days like in the Bible. We should celebrate the feast days, have our own feast day. They, they do it seven times a year, seven times. It's like Thanksgiving seven times. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Some of you that be cooking might be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that seven times a year. Well, praise God anyhow. Hallelujah. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Jesus is the express image of the person of God. That means he is a reflection. He's exactly like God is here on the earth, a physical expression, physical representation, a physical imprint of who the father is, is the son. Now, I don't believe that the son is the father. And I don't believe that the father is the son. I believe that there is a distinction. Perhaps it may be parabolic. But what I see is that the distinction is between flesh and spirit, humanity and divinity. Many can argue and speculate these points. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more that we don't understand, though many of us claim to understand. Even myself, I've been there. Yes, I understand this perfectly. And the more I study and dig into it, the more I'm like, you know what? I need to study a little more. I need to pray a little more. I need to get a little more clarity. Anyways, this is where I stand right now with that. However, that's subject to change upon revelation from God. So Hebrews 1, 7, this is what I'd like to share with you. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his ministers or his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Angels by nature are spirit. They are ministers. They are ministers. They're a flaming minister, a fire. And here's what they do. Hebrews 1, 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. This is why I employ angels, so to speak. I ask for angels to be sent. Why? Because they are sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now, whether that's speaking to the church who are not yet heirs by experience but heirs by promise, or whether that's talking about people that should come to know who Christ is and thus become heirs of God, heirs of salvation. In either case, I'm of the opinion that we can employ the angels and we can pray, Father, send your angels, send ministering spirits to that brother, send ministering spirits to that family member who I've been praying for to get saved. Send your angels, Lord, with healing to this individual for whom I've been praying 
that they be healed. It says so here. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? This leads me to believe that we can speak to angels and call for the assistance of angels. They are here to serve us. They are our ministers. Do they have authority? Absolutely. We should utilize that authority. I believe that it's possible and I practice that. And from my personal experience, obviously this is a qualitative experience. This is my qualitative assessment. But my testimony is that I believe that prayers have been answered. When I've asked angels to be sent, I have seen things happen. So if you're a skeptic, that's okay. I'm cool with that. Try it. Ask God to send the angels. Command the angels. Say, hey, angels of the Lord, go and do this. Go and do that. And see what happens. I have had successes. So much so that I'll continue to do that. I have not been uh, discouraged from doing so. Neither do I believe that this is not true. I think that we can command angels. Praise God. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. These are people that God has foreknown. In his foreknowledge, God understands who's going to be saved and who is not going to be saved. He knows who's going to reject them. He knows every single possible route that he can take to reach them. And no matter what he does, they're going to end up rejecting him. There are people there. Call it collateral damage. Call it what you will. But there are people that exist and that have lived that no matter what God does, they will not choose to serve God. They will not choose to love God. It's their choice and they just don't want it. Now, thank God when the gospel came that I responded and he knew and you too, you responded to the call of God because God has foreknown you and written your name in the book of life. Let's continue to pray for those who are resisting God. That it might be said in the end, we've done everything that we can to reach you with the truth. And you have continuously rejected it. Our hands are clean from your blood. Because each and every one of us possesses the power of volition. We can make our own choices. And so we can choose to reject God and his love, or we can choose to receive it by humbling ourselves and placing our faith in the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, and may he be gracious to you, and may he give you peace. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, there is a link that I'm going to post at the end of this video. It's, it has my face on it. It's a subscription link. It'll lead you to the subscription page. Hit that bell for notifications and praise God. I'm going to post some links also to other videos. If you are interested in some other material from this channel, feel free to browse it. There is a lot of videos that I've shot, about 400 plus videos now, maybe 500, I've lost count, but they're here for your edification and to help you grow in your knowledge and your relationship with God. God bless you all, and may His grace be with you. Lord have mercy, please have mercy on me, and if I done done somebody wrong, have mercy if you